much about you. Like, maybe you earn a lot more than me. Maybe you're a lot more talented at singing than me. Maybe you're uh, handsome, maybe you're pretty. I don't know much about you, but I do know one thing. You're a sinner. How do I know it? Because we're all sinners. <laughs> that you are thinking about today here in Preston on this Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Perhaps you've got good news. Perhaps you're walking around and you've got pain in your heart. I wonder what's going on. What are you thinking about today? Do you know what I'm thinking about today? I'm thinking about you. And that's why I'm out here today. Because I've got a hope for you. Not a hope in me. Not a hope in some religion. But a hope in a man who died 3,000 years ago. Jesus Christ. And I'm going to ask you today, have you thought about this? Here's a name for you. I wonder what comes to your mind when I say this name. Dominic Cummings. What comes to your mind as soon as I say that name? I wonder what you're thinking when I say the name Dominic Cummings. What comes to your mind when I say to you, you know, at that cop who killed George Floyd? What comes to your mind? We get angry, don't we? You know, it's on it. As we think about it, we are actually creatures of justice. We want justice. And that's why Dominic Cummings wound us up so much. Because we said, why should we follow the rules? And then this guy at the top decides he doesn't have to follow the rules. Can I ask you a question? If we just evolved for millions and millions of years from slime, why is it we get so angry when people break the law? Why is it we get so wound up by people like Dominic Cummings? If we're just, we're just animals, why is it we get upset by those things? I'll tell you why. Because we've got a conscience. The Bible says God has written the law upon man's heart by giving us a conscience. You know the difference between right and wrong. I know the difference between right and wrong. But my question to you is, can I ask you, have you done wrong before? Would you say you're a sinner? I don't know much about you. Like maybe you earn a lot more than me. Maybe you're a lot more talented at singing than me. Maybe you're uh, handsome, maybe you're pretty. I don't know much about you, but I do know one thing. You're a sinner. How do I know it? Because we're all sinners. Have a good look at me now, okay? I'm a married man, believe it or not. Uh, a woman would marry me, but yeah, I'm a married man. What do you think? Do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? Over to you. Do you think I've ever made my wife cry? I have, actually. And you see these eyes? Imagine everything I've seen in my life went on this board. Would I be ashamed of anything I've looked at in my life? I would. I'd be embarrassed. And I think if we put everything you've seen in, in your life on this board, you'd be embarrassed too. I know I'm a dweeb, I know many of you would just wipe me out, but do you think I've ever hit anyone before with these fists? I have actually, but now ask me this question, am I going to heaven? I am, not because I'm a good person, as you've just heard, I'm really not, I'm, I'm not the nicest guy around, but I'm going to heaven because the blood of Jesus Christ has washed me white than snow. Amen. God bless you. Are you washed in the blood? This man will talk to you here. And we're out here to tell you today that that blood can wash you white and snow. You might have done wrong, you might have, we've all got skeletons in our closets, haven't we? But heaven is a gift, not a reward. You can't earn your way to heaven. No amount of prayers, no amount of going to religious ceremonies, going to church, going to mosque, that won't get you into heaven. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that can wash you white and snow. It's only that blood that can cleanse you. Let me put a, a, an illustration to you. Uh, pretend you're a child now, okay? And you're wearing white shoes, white trousers, white, white trainers, white shirt. If you go into your mum's house, she's got a white carpet, white walls, white ceiling. And on the bottom of your shoe, you've got the tiniest speck of dog muck on your shoe. If your mum sees that, what do you say? Lick it off, mate. Lick it off, okay? So, yeah, sit around for a minute, my friend. If you walk in there, okay, with that tiny bit of muck on your shoe, you won't let you into your house. Get someone like me to clean it off. Well, he can't talk to me. This man, he's full of that. He's full of uh, words, but he won't come and chat to me. Okay, so we're here today, and we're saying that there's an answer. Okay, we might be unclean, we might have done wrong things, but Jesus loves you enough to bleed and die on a cross, and that's why we're out out here today. Do you know what day Jesus rose from the dead? It was on a Sunday. You might say you don't care, but you'll care one day. I promise you. That's why we're out here. Because we're all going to die one day. The, the fact is this, the coronavirus has made us think more about life and death. It showed us just how weak we are. Left us terrified. 
terrified, it left us scared. We thought we were wise, we thought we were strong, we thought we had technology that could overcome everything. But now we see just how weak we are. This tiny little virus has shown that actually we're just weak creatures. And to you know who we need? We need God. God is the only one who can help us. God is the only one who can conquer our graves. Because the truth is this, am I right or wrong when I say this? 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or wrong? It's right, isn't it? 150,000 people die every single day. And I'm asking you today, do you know where your soul is going when you die? You might say, I don't believe in God, but I'll tell you, you've got a soul. It's all I have to do is stand with, stand with you when you're in a broken time, and I can see you're a creature, you're a human being with a soul. We love people, we care about people. I've got a 10-month-old son, and there's nothing that makes me more happy than to see my son smile. We're not just animals. We're not just creatures that have bounced around from atoms. We're something more than that. And God has wired you up with a soul. The truth is this, we're all like cars really, aren't we? We've got so many miles left and then the car will run to the ground. You've only got so many miles left and only God knows how long you've got left. And I'm asking you today, do you have an answer to your brain? We've all got a friend who died far too young. We've all got a mate who died very, very young. Young people die as well as old people. So please consider your soul today. Consider the one, Jesus, who died on the cross and rose from the dead. The one who loved you. The one who says, any who come to me, I'll by no means turn away. I'll by no means cast you out. Please consider this God, my Jesus.